Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mix It Up with ML, episode number 15. And for our new listeners, if you haven't heard one yet, yes, sir. Uh, this podcast is all about learning from and just connecting with people who are really, really passionate in their chosen fields. Um, and today, honestly, I'm very fired up because this guy gets me fired up always. And he already got me fired up. Vice today. versa, vice versa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> So before we intro our guest, I uh, just wanted to give a quick plug. If you could please like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the content, all the things that YouTubers say, that would be yeah. super helpful. Like subscribe, wherever it is. <laughs> wherever the click is, the yeah, the bell. Go to that right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. So today, again, I'm fired up to have Luke Tim, who is a Princeton University graduate, class of 2021, and founder of T Swath. He's got the hat and the shirt on. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Stay tuned, uh, which is a brand that helps promote a positive mindset through the awareness of surroundings and vices. Mm -hmm. So again, super excited to talk with Luke today about his inspirational journey, overcoming substance abuse, and just this brand that he has started with the hopes of positively impacting others. So thanks again for coming on, Luke. I appreciate it, my bro. Hey man, I'm excited. I, I, you know, I, uh, we, we always go back and forth on Instagram because I always love what you post and whatnot. You've been hitting me back. So, um, and when we kind of just were talking about this podcast, I was like, bro, that uh, I would love to be on. You're like, yo, I was thinking about having you. And I was beautiful. Let's get it done. Let's do it. Mind meld. Yes, sir. That, that was, what was that a week ago? Right. And I think so. Yeah. Luke was like, I'd love to come on the pod. And literally, bro, I'm not even lying. I was thinking about asking you like the day before and I was going to ask you and then you're like, I'd love to come on. So it's perfect. perfect. Oh, yeah. Good job. All right. So again, I just like to start these pods with a quick intro of like how myself and the guest met just to give any listeners, you know, some context. So it's not just like two strangers today. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I, so I was a, I was on the football team for a while. Um, so I was coming back. To, I took a year off, came back, and wasn't on the football team. And I was, like, looking to fill this void. I was, like, you know, didn't have any athletics going on. I've had it my entire life. So I was, like, yeah, I need to get something going. And um, I forget who I talked to um, specifically just to get involved with club basketball. But I think you know, somebody said was, like, oh, there's, like, these tryouts going on. Um, and so I showed up. And it was a blast. And uh, I just, like, I remember seeing you, man, the freaking boot on your leg. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's, that thing, it still pains me to think about because I would have loved to ball out with you. Mm -hmm. But I remember you were always there just running everything, making sure everything was in line, uh, you know, running all the drills, um, putting the teams together, coaching us up. Um, and so that's what I kind of knew you as. So I was kind of looking up to you on the court. Um, but I, I mean, I would have loved to, to been out there balling with you. You know, that was unfortunate. But now I, I see you on the gram throwing down dunks off the backboard. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Left hand. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. all right, damn. Okay. I'll Trying see. to get the ankle back, bro, because that, yeah. that was a brutal injury. And like you said, I would love to hoop with you. But I forgot it was junior fall, bro. I mean, that makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. I, I forgot which year it was. But, mm -hmm. man, Luke Tim, for the listeners, this guy is varsity football player, but came in and was just hooping. For our club basketball team so we appreciated you running with us man thank you again fun, for that it was real fun it was a good time <laughs> great great all right well i figured we could just dive right in here brother let's do it um so to set the stage for everybody before we kind of get into your journey at princeton and everything i actually wanted to ask you about your time leading up to princeton um yeah. and like in particular it culminated like your athletic uh success kind of culminated in your senior year i did my research bro where you set a state record with about 1,600 receiving yards and 18 receptions in the state final. Yes. And my question actually, bro, was going to be, what was your mental state like during that period of your life? And even before, but especially when it culminated in all that success, right? Yeah. Did you feel that you were in a solid mental space then? Or were some of those difficulties that you had to, you know, really face later on, were they lurking underneath? Like, what was that sort of like for you? Yeah, no, they were definitely there. So, um, I mean, I mean, we'll probably talk about my story, but I mean, I was drinking, started drinking heavy when I was like 12 years old. So okay. that was always like, that was kind of always a part of my life. And so like football, so I didn't even actually start playing football until my sophomore year of high school. So I was like a cross country runner. I played basketball. And so I was like top 10 in the country for cross country my 
as a freshman. So I was wow. like super, super skinny, like six three, one thirty five. Okay. Like stick and bone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I can, I ran a four thirty mile on the road. Um, uh, my goal was like to break four minutes at the end of high school. So that was like that was those are my goals. But uh, eventually, I be uh, I was best friends with the quarterback who was a freshman. Started as a freshman all the way to my senior year. And uh, I was friends with him and I just started tossing the rock with him. And he's like, oh, you should come out and whatever. And so I did my sophomore year. I was on varsity, didn't really play. And but then my junior year, I kind of like blew up. And then my senior year is like the, the year I had that record setting year. Yeah. Um, and like throughout that whole process, it was definitely like I think I feel like going into high school was kind of like my downfall um, from like where I, I feel like I was best. Like eighth grade, I was like very focused on school. Um, I mean, I still was doing crazy stuff and I was drinking at the time. It was probably more seventh grade. I was more focused. Eighth grade was a little downhill, but it all, like, I feel like it all kind of, uh, started going downhill in a sense of like my mindset being right. And it wasn't like, it didn't directly correlate with how I performed because, you know, I, I wasn't lifting the weights all year round. I wasn't doing, and I would, I was running routes with my quarterback, but I wasn't doing as much as I should have not right. even close. Right. But the results on the field were there. So in my head, I was like, oh, I'm good. Like I'm doing everything right. Like I can I can do whatever I want off the field and still do what I need to be done on the field. Right. That was like kind of my mindset, um, which definitely was not good for me. And like I definitely like my my ego was big. Mm. Um, and it was partially because I remembered being like a freshman and sophomore and being like older kids saying to me, like, oh, you're never going to be as good as me or like. You know, it was, it was, I went from a weird place being like, I don't want to say a no, nobody, but like not really being as known to like mm -hmm. all of a sudden being put on this platform, even though it was like a local platform, you know, it was still like a, a big deal to me. Yeah. And like, I kind of like attributed it to like, like I would always just go around and hear Luke Tim, like my first and last name or just like both first names. And it's like, everybody is always like Luke Tim, Luke Tim. So like, I feel like people hear the name Luke Tim and it just sticks. So I'd go around places and people like, oh, you're Luke Tim, you're Luke Tim. I mean, and like that stuff definitely got to me. Like being mm. a young kid, um, partying all the time, Friday and Saturday nights, heavy. Um, I mean, there was a bunch of crazy shit I was doing that I shouldn't have done. Yeah. And it's like I could have gotten in trouble way, 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 way sooner. Um, it just didn't happen. And I'm lucky it did yet, um, eventually. But yeah, so that was like my mind state was definitely in the same spot it was going into Princeton up until my arrest and like six months after that until I kind of like got clean, got sober. Um, it was April 21st, 2018. What's mm -hmm. the date? So yeah, it's three years, two months and six days, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's been a big switch since then. It's been a progression as well. It wasn't just like, all right, I'm sober and boom, I'm like rock solid mental state. You know, I've been progressing slowly up and up and up. Um, and, you know, just every day, it's just a, a little battle, you know, that's right. It. Right. And shoot. Well, thanks for sharing that, bro. And I'm going to unpack a lot of that later for sure. Oh, yeah. um, and I think it's really interesting to me how you were saying it doesn't it didn't correlate for you at that time. Right. Yeah. How you you felt like you were doing things you shouldn't do off the field, but then your performance was still there on the field. Right. And like one of my questions coming in was like, do you think there's some credence to the idea that, you know, the things that can like really torment us or kind of like the dark side of the mind can actually make us great as well? Do you feel like that was part of your athletic success or was it not really related? Cause like, um, you know, like MJ, super obsessive, Kobe, yeah. super obsessive. What yeah. do you think about I, that? I think to a, a point. Yeah. I definitely have that, um, you know, that addictive obsessive drive, drive in me, um, which to a point, was good but I feel like it also um you know some of that stuff is good but then it gets to a point where it's too much of that is you know any excess of anything is too much right and and then it translated into substances and whatnot and that in its own you know if I was staying away from that then maybe I would have said no it would have been fine but because it you know when it got, got into partying you know smoking drinking more stuff more stuff you know it was like all right it it gave me that swagger. It gave me that confidence. Yeah. I was never, I was always confident I was going to make the play. I was always confident that we were going to win. You know, confidence has never been something I've lacked. Right. 
that's just it's that's not me but um you know I just remember like that state championship game I played defense I had uh two interceptions and I, I couldn't breathe though I couldn't breathe because I was smoking so much wow that like I, I'm in my lungs I had a permanent cough like my cough was like it was like two years straight of just mm. like a smoker's cough you know and like when you're an athlete and you're trying to like play at the next level and be the best you can be like you're, you're not smoking like that you know like, right I kind of thought I was like Randy Moss or something yeah, like, yeah. right I wasn't anywhere near that you know like some people can just do that but and I got I did do it I did do it for a bit but it, like it, at, at a certain point it hits you you know right it's everybody it's a reality and bro that was literally my next question like when did it hit you when did it when did that ride stop where you were just like man I can't do this anymore like when did things start to really go south for you? Uh, was that at Princeton and, and sort of take me through that process? Yeah, yeah, it would definitely, um, it was at Princeton. So like I, going into that Princeton that summer, I didn't work out, I didn't lift. Like I was the worst prepared person by far wow. in all my freshman class. Um, I still managed to pass the condition test was like half the kids did it. I was just <laughs> I was light, like I was always in a distance runner. My endurance is like crazy yeah so i never had trouble with that but after that point it was like i didn't know any of the plays i so like to the coaches i was like i was it was it was worse than like if you were getting yelled at it's like at least they they gave a shit you know right but it was like past the point where they're even yelling at me it was like i wasn't even there you know right. it, was, it was like that bad but i remember going in there like oh i'm not gonna smoke all that stuff and like it went like f four or five six days of camp and then but you kind of just realize like you know st stuff like that is out there right uh you know it got to me and yeah it was a very quick uh journey right back to where i was smoking every day mm. waking up smoking before a meeting napping smoking before practice smoking 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 like i i love to smoke weed I'm like wow. that was something i can never you know people say weed's not addictive but um you know it does something to the your, your dopamine pathways that you know is similar to whatever cocaine those other drugs that are harder obviously it's a lot less right it's like way more minimal but um for me i just i loved it and i think maybe it's because i'm like a very hyper person and it like chilled me out a little bit mm. um but it also made me not give a shit and it helped me to not care that i wasn't giving a shit you know wow. yeah yeah so it was like i you know i maybe have anxiety about something because like normally a normal person would be like oh i have this test i gotta study for it and you know if you weren't studying for it you feel stressed about it but right. i was smoking so much that it kind of just it made me not stressed about not studying so it made me even more lazy you know more undetermined and uh, yeah, I felt fine doing that because I was smoking so much, you know? This is kind of a rough cycle where you couldn't get out of that, right? Because you were in the bad space, but then like smoking so much weed made you not worried about where you were at. Is that what you're saying? That's hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it was, it, it was, yeah, it was nuts. And like looking back on it, but that's just the way I lived and like just barely getting by, like was, that was my mentality. It was like, oh, is that if I can just skate by, like, that's perfectly fine. Just pass. You know, I finished my freshman year with a one five GPA. Like, I was going to ask you, bro, about your about your grades, like because you were talking yeah. about managing the football field. Right. Oh. But you write like one five GPA. So like the classroom was tough for you, too. Yes. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was all self-induced. It wasn't like, oh, this work is like not possible to do. Yeah. Like miss assignment here. You know, didn't I didn't know what precept was until the second my second semester wow. I failed out of a class because I didn't know that yeah. it was a thing wow. yeah it was really bad like I didn't go to any of my orientation stuff so I didn't really know what was going on right um yeah I was always I was always trying to get out of stuff to the minimum you know mm -hmm. that was kind of my mentality I will say though when I was like lifting on the field I was going 100 percent like right. that was always that was something I never lacked was like um in the moment pushing myself um, it was kind of just getting myself to to do it, like to go there, like just to show up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like the extra stuff, 
um, studying for the plays and whatnot was not something I was going to do because I, you know, I was getting my minimal stuff done and I would smoke. Right. You know, and, but like once I was on the field, like I was, whatever, I didn't care that I was four string. Like for me, that was fine. I, I would go as hard as I could on four string. Like that was always a good mentality that I think I carried with me throughout everything, even through all that shit. Um, mm -hmm. Was that I was, when I was present on the field, I was working 100%. And right. That, that was it and like but it that's like that's like what we were talking about before we got on the show it's like yeah I can work hard for my nine to five you know I can work as hard as I can during my nine to five but then once that's done it's like if I just chill out everything yeah. I want to get that I want to do that's not just that it's you know you're not gonna be able to build off that you know mm -hmm. so that's kind of like the mentality I had right and Bro, let me ask you this. What was what was the people around you saying to you at that point? Friends, family, did people know? Did they not know? What was that like for you? Yeah, so like um, I'd say starting at home, it was like I was very unintouched with my mom. Like, she, you know, our relationship was basically nothing. Like, you mm -hmm. know, in high school, we had a bad relationship just because I was always off doing what I wanted to do. Um, and she was very strict. So we, 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 uh, heads really butt heads so yeah i didn't have a good relationship with her in college but she you know she knew what i was up to um and then like friends you know there was guys on the team who were kind of like all right this guy is a shithead but like most a lot of people loved it you know because like i was the funny guy and i i still am like i didn't i didn't realize that i didn't need that stuff to be that guy you know yep. that like makes people laugh and stuff like that um but yeah like some people you know bothered some people because they're like this kid doesn't give a shit you know and like I understand because you, you know, you're on this team, you work hard, but it requires 120 guys to work hard. And if, yep. you know, your success is a part of other people doing their job. So if someone else is slacking off, it's like, you're, you're, you're coming to my livelihood and messing up what I'm doing. You know, I, I totally understand that, but you know, a lot of people, you know, I had that reputation as like a kid that was just, uh, I don't know, just partied and, had a good time. So like, I, I definitely thrived off that in the moment. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's some, there's probably some people that were worried about me, but I feel like I don't really remember too many people, um, you know, really saying like, Oh, you should stop doing this or stop doing that. Right. Not, not to say that people didn't care. I think it was just that, um, you know, I'm a, I was, I was a grown man. I was 18 years old, you know, like yep. people, you're making your own life decisions at that point. And, uh, yeah. And that's and I guess it had to do with people you surround yourself with too, because they're they're kind of doing the same stuff you're doing, you know. So they're not gonna really right, right. You know. And so, bro, like that kind of continued right right up to your arrest. And was your arrest in your sophomore year? Yeah, so that was my sophomore year. Sophomore yes. year. So if you're comfortable, could you like take me through that moment? Like what's going on in your mind? I guess like immediately after. Um and was that sort of the turning point for you where you realized that, you know, you needed to change or was it after that, uh, yeah. like sometime after that? I'd love to hear. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I remember getting put, I mean, I remember everything vividly. Yeah. Um, I remember, you know, getting taken down, uh, put in handcuffs. Like, I remember the sound of it. Uh, I remember, like, my face being pressed into the rocks on the ground. Um. I, just, I remember getting in the cop car and just apologizing to the guy. I was like, hey, man, like, you know, I, you know, I didn't mean for all this to happen. Like, I don't know if, I mean, you probably looked into it, but like, I, I, it was a, this is a stupid incident. Um, mm -hmm. Great thing that it happened, but I was at a pregame, everybody left, um, you know, and I was doing some substances and whatnot. And I left by myself had an open container, cops were right around the corner as I went around. And so I was like kind of tweaking in my head because I'm like, oh, I've already been in trouble. I was in trouble my freshman year before school even started mm -hmm. smoking um, with the cops, the, the campus police. So okay, I was already like, all right, this is gonna get me kicked out for a year if they like end up searching me because I had stuff on me. Mm. And so I ended up running, booking it and then they start chasing me. Like they obviously don't catch me. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, Al, you look like you sitting eating donuts all day, but uh <laughs> so I hear like the oh, movies. We got a one three four, we got a one three four. And but I was I was so out it uh, didn't really matter. <laughs> and, but I ended up going back out that night. 
Yeah. And then I was like, just hammered kind of, you know, I was all over the place. So we were like, we were at cottage, which I don't know if everyone knows, you know, it's like we have these eating clubs to go out to. So it was mm-hmm. at cottage and um, all of my friends were like, oh, we're going to Ivy tonight. And like, you know, if you don't know you're going somewhere, like you're not on the list and you kind of got to work something out. And so my friend's like, oh, I got you. I got you. I'll get you on. And uh, it ended up that he was like blacked and didn't even remember saying that. So I was mm-hmm. sitting out there with a couple of friends for like 15 minutes. I remember seeing a cop car go past me in my peripheral vision, but I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, I don't think he saw me. I'm wearing a hat, a new shirt, like how could he possibly see me? And then all of a sudden behind me, I feel somebody grab my belt mm. and my friend, I just see his face and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I start running, but he's like holding on to me. So I'm like, like turning my hips and like trying to get him off. Yeah. He's swinging around me. And I remember this moment in my head, very quick i was like i can either hit his arm down and try to run again or just like you know just give in right and i feel like something came over me and i just like put my hands up wow and yeah so he was like take try like he was taking me down to the ground but i was definitely being you know i was resisting i never put my hands on him but i remember he was trying to throw me down i was just trying to keep my base because mm-hmm. um, like there's always stories people are like oh didn't you like punch some cop fight some cop I'm like no like i never touched this cop right okay but i did definitely resist the rest like that's <laughs> for sure uh, I'm, yeah i remember being pushed down to the rocks i remember you know hundreds of people being out on the street like looking mm. um and i, I don't really i don't really remember what i was thinking on the ground but i remember when i got in the cop car i was like hey uh you know i apologize like you know i think like, that was really stupid blah blah um and never was like i didn't really feel sorry for myself i was like what's my next move? That's what mm. I thought. So I knew I was going to be kicked out of school at least for a year. And so I was already thinking about this comeback story, which is, I think it's hilarious because I'm still like intoxicated and whatnot. You're already thinking about uh, it at the moment. <laughs> in, in, right in the back of the cop car on the way to the station, five minutes away. I love it, dude. I'm thinking like, I want to make a, you know, like a, a YouTube channel or something. <laughs> um, the comeback. And... <laughs> You know, that never came to fruition, but uh, <laughs> it is. It's going to soon, so. Exactly. You're on uh, YouTube now, bro. This is the start. This is yeah, the start. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I got, I, we'll talk about it in a little bit. I, yep. I've got plans to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so that, that's that was my initial thoughts. I was like, what's my next move? You know, <laughs> uh, back of the cop car handcuff. <laughs> I got the police station, got my, um, sat there all night, got my mug shot done, my fingerprints. Mm um yeah so that's that shit was kind of a pain in the ass when i was looking for a job but luckily i was able to work something out um, yeah but yeah so yeah, that was my thought process right there in that moment that was your thought process bro and so then take me through it you took the gap year like mm-hmm. directly after that what, what yeah. yeah so was that in the winter of your sophomore year or something yeah so that was like so it was right before it was right before Halloween because I remember. Okay, fall. I remember. Um, I think Halloween was like we celebrated on like a Thursday, and I think it was like the when I got arrested was a Saturday. Okay. I remember going out on like Halloween night or whatever we like the night was, and I was out in a criminal suit with handcuffs. <laughs> I was such a goon, bro. I remember <laughs> loving it though. Of course, I was just like, oh my god. That was after you got arrested. Right after, yeah, after I got arrested. That's wow. what I Halloween. Oh my god. I thought it was hilarious, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I ended up, I got kicked out for a year. Okay. Um, you know, I was remorseful, apologetic. You know, I, th- I feel like in those cases, you just got to be respectful, open and honest. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I did realize I had a problem kind of at that point. And I always kind of went back and forth before that, like, man, I should stop smoking. I should, you know, um, you know, I never, the drinking thing never really triggered in my head until that because... I got in a lot of trouble with drinking when I was younger, mm. you know, from the age of 14, I would say till college, I was getting in trouble for drinking. You know? mm-hmm. It wasn't every time that I drank, I got in trouble, but every time I got in trouble, I was drinking. Right. Right. <laughs> got yeah. it. So, and most people don't get in trouble. So, mm. and I was getting in a ton of trouble all the time. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, like your uh, gap year, I wanted to know, like sort of. Right. Right. Like, what was that process? Like, you kind of hinted that you were remorseful, honestly, in the back of the cop car, kind of like five minutes later. Right. But like, kind of walk me through that process of 
right? Again, like your friends have family taking the year off and then what was, what that process was like. And then, like you said, April 21st, I think 2018. So that spring is when yeah. you started that journey. Um, but I just wanted to start with like right. your mindset going into that gap year, right. And yeah. what that felt like, and then we'll go into like choosing to become sober and whatnot. All right. Yeah. So there's like a six months gap between that, yep. and, like, you know, me getting arrested and being sober. But yeah, I remember the initial thing was like, you know, I already had that bad relationship with my mom and my sister. I don't know if you know, she's at Princeton right now. She's going to be okay. sick this year. Sick. Um, so she's a great track cross country runner. Mm. Um, she was like second in nationals in the 800 meter indoor. Like she, she's legit. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's sick. But uh, I remember getting a call from her crying because her coach said to her like, oh, this might affect her emissions. So I was like, oh, shit, like, mm. I, I, you know, it's fine. Like, I'm messing up my own life. But then you start realizing I'm messing up other people's lives, too. You know, mm. like, this isn't just about me. It's like a, there's a there's a bigger picture with a lot of moving pieces, and a lot of people um, that you're affecting. You know, it's never just you. Mm -hmm. with anything. you know, all your decisions affect other people. So, yes, sir. So I realized that. So I got home and I was, you know, I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to stop drinking and all this stuff. And I constantly just went back and forth. Like I remember my cousin had a wedding and I was probably like, like two weeks sober at that point. And I, I drank that night, I smoked. Uh, and then that led me down probably like a month or two of, you know, sm drunk, like smoking and drinking. Drinking wasn't really a big thing when I was home. I was mostly just smoking a bunch. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and then I'd be like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I would stop for a couple of weeks, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then um so i knew i had this problem i knew i had to stop and i was just I, I you know i wasn't reaching i wasn't being open enough with people that you cared to like you know really beat it because it's a, it really is about like the people that you surround yourself with um so i you know it was about it was april probably 24th it was like it's probably like my fourth time trying to get sober yeah and my coach or um I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. So I, I reached out to somebody who I know and I was like, hey, you know, I, I, I really need help. Yeah. You know, I know they've been through something. So um, and that's when I started doing AA. And uh, that's really where I went from, you know, kind of being in and out to like, let me like write down the path of like, just mm. being sober, being content with it, being happy with my life. Um, it was kind of crazy how that all worked. Um, it was just like a, a group of people that are looking to do something for the common good of others, you know? So yeah. like, and it, it worked for me. It worked like a, a charm, you know? Right, right. And so that was what I wanted to ask you was like, you know, when you chose to be sober on that first day or like that, that final time, you know, what motivated you to take that step and how did you break through? Would you say it was like the support of other people at AA that was really the deciding factor there? Mm -hmm. So I think it was like support and also like a rock bottom. It was like both. Oh, okay. Times Cause it was like, well, the rock bottom hit first because I was like, I wasn't, I wouldn't say homeless, but I was living like friend to friend's house. Um, you know, like sleeping wherever I could mm -hmm. because I was kicked out of the house and that was like going on for a month or so and I was working at the time but I didn't have a car so I was like you know I was a pain in everybody's ass yeah I stopped working because my back hurts so my funds were dwindling and I was like shit you know I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired mm -hmm. so um you know I went home and I was like hey you know I'm gonna try to do this um reach out to somebody um and that was the key for me yeah and I think it was like that whole community aspect seeing there's other people out there that are like you hearing their stories, their experiences, yep. and be like, wow, like, I re I totally understand what this person is, is going through. You know, not to say that our stories are the same, but I can identify with how they feel. Yes, sir. Um, certain emotions, certain uh, things that happen in their lives. So I identified with that. And, you know, I was like, wow, like, that is me. Like, I am, I have a, a piece of me is like within all these other people. Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of their, the whole entire AA, organization is super super uh, supportive so they were like man if i got sober at your age you know like i can only imagine where i'd be you know like wow. keep, coming back, keep coming back and i did i just kept going back kept going back and uh you know ever to this day you know i haven't had a sip of alcohol smoke weed and any other substances so you know it worked for me it did the trick um 
Yeah. Wow. So anybody out there who's you know looking for help, you can always reach out to me. I highly recommend like an AA group because you know, especially I, I knew luckily I knew somebody who was in the program and I felt comfortable. Um, but there's you know, don't be scared to reach out to somebody that you don't know because these people somebody helped them and they're looking to help somebody else. Like that's the whole part, like whole piece of the program is just about giving back because somebody helped you and now it's your turn to help somebody else. And that's what keeps you sober as well. You know, it's like, bro, this has got to be fired up. This is inspirational as all hell, man. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. She's, uh, I know people are going to be, you know, fired up by that as well. And my, my question would be like, when you start, when, so you chose to do that, right? Was your goal like set at like one day or like one week or like one month? What was your mindset? Or did you like, AKA, did you have the, the goal of being sober for a short period of time and just making it to that next meal, so to speak, like as the Navy right. SEALs say, yeah. or was your goal? Like, did you envision, you were saying like, what's my next move? I feel like you're, you're a visionary kind of guy. Did you envision what your life would be like years down the road, like sometime today, if you were sober, what was your mindset when you went into that? Yeah. So I think I've always had a vision. Like I've always been like, Oh, in five years, like I could see myself doing this. And like when I was drinking and doing all that stuff, it wasn't realistic. Mm -hmm. And when I started to, you know, I got sober and started to get organized. And when I, I was like, wow, like there's actual, these goals that I want to achieve are obtainable. Right. So yeah, I was definitely looking ahead um, and just seeing how much potential I had and like, you know, with just being clean and like staying on the right track. But then also, you know, like they say in the program, one day at a time, you one know, day at a time. like you said, the Navy SEAL said, just get into the next meal. Yep. You know, yeah, you know, if you look too far ahead, you're going to stumble over your own feet, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you got to just stay in the moment um, because, you know, like they, you have like 70,000 different thoughts a day <laughs> like that. So it's like, you know, there's constantly, you're battling with something on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? So it's kind of just trying to stay focused be present in the moment um, because you, you never knew like when, if there was temptation around or um, you know, like you just might have the urge. And luckily I really don't remember ever having an urge after that point. Mm. I mean, I, I can, even now I could still sit here and be like, Oh, like I kind of remember what it was like to smoke weed. Like it definitely was nice. You know, yeah. like I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh, like drinking all that stuff wasn't enjoyable because right. like it was, there's a reason why you do it. You know, like it was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized one, it wasn't for me and two was not aligned with my goals and it was like mm -hmm. affecting other people. And so, I, you know, that's kind of when I was like, all right, that's it. And yeah, so it was kind of just looking one day at a time, but then also realizing, all right, I can get to like, I can, I can move mountains with this new lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, that was kind of like what I realized. And it's like, and it's, it's addicting, like just being in control, being yeah. in control. I, I never had control and that's like now it's like I control my own destiny you know like and it feels good right so that was your mindset bro and then we talked about the importance of AA but like I guess outside of that were there any if you could take me even through like these specifics of like were there yeah. what were like the two to three most important factors or like strategies you employed uh you said you didn't have many urges right which is great yeah. But like, yeah. what did you do on that day to day basis? Like, did you replace your time drinking with doing something else? Or like, 100%. walk me through like sort of those factors that in, yeah. in the concrete that really helped you if anybody's listening, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it definitely was. It's always, uh, you know, you're filling a void when you're doing that stuff, you know, yeah. whether you realize it or not. Um, you know, and like some people that do it on occasions, like that's fine, you know, it's for events, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but like people that are doing that on a consistent basis, like you're, you're filling some sort of void, you know? Yep. And so what you got to do when you stop doing that stuff is like, you still have to fill that void with something else or else you're going to drive yourself nuts. So that's when I went crazy with working out. Um, okay. I probably, I, I work out six days a week lifting. I'll do something on the seventh day. Like, you know, be, I'm always proactive with that, but, uh, yeah, it was just immediately went from my first day sober. I've, I have this picture of myself. I think you you probably I love it. I love it. Dog. Open up 421 18 on a sign. Mm -hmm. um, because that was like, that was the low point of like my physique, my mental state, like all that, all this stuff. And I was like, all right, you know, let's see where I can go from here. Mm -hmm. uh, and like physically, like, I feel like that's a huge part of it is like, if I didn't have this, um, 
like if I was in love with fitness and like, you know, just like seeing myself in the mirror and like loving the way I look. Yeah. You know, that's, that stuff's a big motivator for me to stay sober because I'm like, you know, this clean lifestyle is elevating all that stuff. Mm. Um, and so that, that stuff definitely helps me. And I feel like if I wasn't doing that, it would, I don't know what I would even do with my time, you know? Right. Like, right. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it was definitely the working out was probably like the first thing that I had to fill the void. But then I got back to school um, and I was just working out by myself and like doing school. And I was like disconnected from football. And I was yep. like, oh, man, like, I missed that, you know? Um, that's where I started playing club basketball with you guys. Yes, sir. Coming boys with you guys. And that was, that was a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I feel like I still got to, you know, make this return. And like, I, I did plan on it coming back into my sophomore year, but my coach wanted me to take my time. You know, he knew how crucial it was for me to stay in the right mindset mm. and stay on this road to sobriety and whatnot. So he's like, you know, what? get through your first semester, we'll stay in touch. And then second semester, we'll get things rolling. But during that first semester, I was like, I was always like, oh man, I, I don't want something to do, you know? Cause I was, I was working out, um, but my social, I think my social life, my sophomore, that second sophomore year was like, my like the least interaction i had with other people yeah i was I hung out with my sister a bunch because yeah. she's a person. but i wasn't really going out that much because it was i was new to sobriety didn't really understand like you know how to go out there and cope with that like while other people are drinking mm. um, and now up to this point it's like i go out just as much as any of my other friends who drink you know and i, I always love to um but like like we were talking about in the beginning now i'm trying to cut that out just because right um, it's not even like i wake up the next day with a hangover it's like if i stay up that late it's gonna mess up when i wake up right it's gonna you know that's just those four hours five hours that i go out it's precious time that i'm losing as well mm. you know so i that's why i'm trying to cut the, all, all that stuff out but it's i went from my sophomore year you know barely ever wanted to go out to now i love going out and seeing people you know but, yeah uh, that was definitely like a weird spot where i was like how do i do this whole sobriety thing and like social not like social interaction on like a day-to-day -day basis, but like in like a big, like crowd settings while everyone's drinking. Mm -hmm. you know? What was harder for you making the choice, like that final choice on April 21st or 24th or stuff like this that you're talking about, like re-engaging with the world, um, trying to be sober, your social life, you know, replacing that time going out with working out was, was all that harder or was making the choice harder? Hmm. That's a damn good question. Uh, if you had to choose. Yeah. I would say not the choice itself, but everything else, because that was stuff you had to deal with, like, through, like throughout the, like every day, every day. Yeah. Every day grind um, where that choice was kind of like, all right, um, I'm committed to this. I made this commitment, but then like that other stuff was kind of like the repercussions of that commitment whether those repercussions were good or bad mm. you know um and you know most of the time most of the effects of being sober were great but yeah i did realize you know i did struggle a little bit um trying to just like where do i fit in you know and it, yeah. it, was, it was because of the drinking but it was also because of you know i wasn't playing sports um you know yeah i think it was mostly like just the, like not being on the team that was like most of my Princeton experience was being on the football team, most of my friends, you know, so not to say that I, I wouldn't see them and they wouldn't say what's up and, you know, mm -hmm. but a lot of the people I was hanging out with um, in general at school were kind of doing the stuff I was doing before. So those other friends were kind of pushed aside and then it was kind of like this whole, like trying to get reintegrated thing. Yeah. Um, so I definitely said that was a little tougher for sure. Mm. That's really interesting. And I mean, you're hinting at it here that, right? That's kind of a continual grind, a continual battle. Um, would you say though, that there's like a point of no return or, or was there a point of no return in your journey where you're like, okay, it's still a battle every day, but like, I'm never going back to where I was or not. Yeah. I don't know exactly when like that switch flip, but like, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I don't even like, to me, it's not a battle anymore, which is like the crazy part. Cause like wow. for some reason, yeah, for some reason, like, I don't want to, like, put a label on it and be like, oh, after you do it a certain amount of time, it's not going to be a battle. Yeah, yeah. But for some reason, I think it's just because I've seen so much 
success from this lifestyle that I'm living that it's yeah. like it's given me like that confidence that swagger that that I had while I was doing that stuff even more so you know and it's like so and I feel like you know if I went back to that stuff I would lose the benefit all the benefits that I've gained I'd be a shell of myself and even mm -hmm. though you know I could uh, uh, like a substance you can kind of like use that as a crutch to like elevate you know how you feel and whatnot i'd go back down and be like oh shit like look like all that i've lost you know so like i think um so i was reading this tony robbins book and i just put this like i'd never really understood why it was i made that switch talk and to you, me you know, I'm, I'm, i know you know you probably know tony robbins obviously yeah yep. um so i was reading one of his books what the hell is it called uh the giant awaken the giant within you i think it's called yes sir yes sir and it talks about our relationship with pain. And so basically what I come to realize is that there's either, we either, we associate pain with things that we don't like, right? And then um, we associate pleasure with things that we do like. And basically what we do on a day-to-day -day basis without us even realizing it is that we have to, we unconsciously weigh the, the plus or minus of the pleasure or the, the game that's about to happen, you mm -hmm. know? So um, for somehow I tip the scale from going to, oh man, you know, there's too much pain with like working hard and whatnot. And like, there's all this pleasure to with, you know, this drugs and whatnot. And like, you know, that's why I chose this. I escaped the pain, right? Because I didn't want to do all that work. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't enjoy that. And I, you know, received immediate pleasure. So for me, it was like in that, time it was such an easy decision for me to make but then over time you know that's that bad things keep happening bad things keep happening and then you start to associate so much pain with the stuff that gave you pleasure because that stuff was not sustainable mm. that it all of a sudden all those things that caused me you know that I had so much fun with were caused me so much pain that it became okay this is way too much pain for me to handle at this point like I it just clicked in my head like mm. way too much pain and then I started to associate pleasures with things that, um, you know, that were building like my like resume as a person, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think it was like, you know, like that switch from being like with, from short-term gratification to long-term gratification, you know, mm. and being able to like see out the pleasure and like working hard and whatnot, because it's not, it's not something that I don't, you don't lift on chest day and then all of a sudden you wake up the next day and your chest is out to here you know like yeah but you just know like with consistent work that you know um results are going to occur and that's the thing with lifting is i fell in love with it because i could see you could physically see the results yeah oh so like when i'm studying and whatnot i don't i don't see the results like I, I can kind of realize like oh wow i'm starting to use better vocabulary when i speak i start to understand the terminology in like the business I'm working in, mm -hmm. but it's not like, I think there's something with seeing it's like seeing is believing, you know, like mm -hmm. if you see something you, you can't, it's like, it's the truth to you. Yeah. You know? Um, and like, I don't know, for me, I feel like that's like my strongest sense of like out of all my five senses was seeing. And that's why I loved working out. Cause I was like, right. wow, I see these results. And then I started doing these other stuff. So now this other stuff. And I was like, all right, I can like, sense that I'm you, you know I'm able to understand more of like the literature I'm reading or I'm able to come up with bigger ideas about um certain like projects I'm working on yeah concepts and all that stuff was happening and you know and that's just all the, the pleasure of that stuff it just triggered in my head it's like wow this is this is addicting you know yeah thing and um all these other things that I'm working on that stuff's addicting where and I I was just had so much pain associated to like having a drink or smoking or any of that stuff because I just remember where where it could take me right now you know and mm. like and I think back then it was uh something I think about is that I had like when you're younger like you're like going to college and like going to like your school and whatnot that's like a big your big accomplishment that you can kind of lean on it's like oh wow i got into this school yeah this you know but then i started to realize like i can't the princeton crutch like oh like oh man i go to princeton i play football at princeton like 
that's not going to last forever. It's you know, four like, years. Like four years. It's now all it is is a piece of paper. Yeah. You know, luckily, I know some great people. Yep. Come from the school, you know, amazing people like yourself included, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hundreds of others. Like we were fortunate enough to be around people like that. But now all it is in the real world is a piece of paper, you know, mm. and it doesn't dictate how you're doing your job. Somebody who went to community college for four years can go in and do a better job than you. Amen. Do. Amen. So that's kind of like, I realized that and I was like, you know, this lifestyle I'm living is going to get me to where I want to be. Yeah. All that other stuff, you know, and I can't rely on anything like, you know, that Princeton uh, name on my resume. To, it's not going to do the work for me, you know? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, bro, I'm fired up again. I'm fired up. <laughs> and like, just if I could even take what I took from that, bro, like, and this kind of resonating in my life, it's like, even this is not exactly what you said, but it's almost like my take on it, bro. Like even finding pleasure in pain and that sounds masochistic mm -hmm. and all that, but like, right. Like starting to enjoy like working out and, and the pain that it puts your muscles in, right. Cause you know that that's gonna like make your muscles bigger later or like the time studying, you know, that's going to help you score better later. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like starting to shift your mindset to actually enjoy that stuff. Right. And that's a mindset shift. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, that's something that I kind of take away from what you just said. Oh, and I think yeah. it's really important for people to hear, right? Like not shying away from that pain because right. it can really bring you places. You know right. what I'm saying? 100%. Yes, yep. exactly. It. Are you, do you like, um, you, follow like Goggins or Jocko. Of course, of course, of course, dude. Yeah, man, my, my guy Goggins, <laughs> yeah. I, my friends are stay hard. Of me. Stay, stay hard. Stay hard. Merry effing Christmas. <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude, yeah. I, exactly. He was always just like, in life, you're always going to encounter pain, no mm. matter what. So it's like, instead of just shying away from it, it's like, just do it. Like, just do stay things hard. you don't like to do. Yep. That was, yeah. that's what he said. He, I, it was like, it's, Nothing he says is like spoken like beautifully or eloquently. Like he's not like persuading you through these like crazy elegant arguments, you know? Logical, yeah. Like like one or two and liners and they just make sense, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just like, I, that's why I like a guy like him. It's because anybody on any level can understand what he's talking about, you know? Absolutely. Like, like, and it, none of the shit he says is fake. It's not, okay, you do this 90 day program with us. And he's just like, no, work hard. Mm -hmm. work hard results are going to happen and then, then people will have to realize that's as simple as it gets it's yeah. <laughs> if you work hard good things will happen that's mm -hmm. it there's no secret success you know there's no way of getting around that yeah uh, you know you're not gonna be able to work three hours a week and get the results that you want yeah you, you gotta work 100 hours a week and then maybe one day you will be able to work three hours a week mm -hmm. and but that's not how life works and people are looking for that shortcut and it's just no more of that shortcut you know you can't do Bro. it speaking to my soul here speaking to my soul mm -hmm. i think we're at a perfect point to kind of like be at this last third of the, like this last little part of the pod here of just mm -hmm. like the decision to found your brand bro yeah. um we're like could we just talk about that right like your decision to do it what is the message where can people find it uh like what is your vision for it talk to us about that um for yeah. our listeners all right yeah so um so the brand is called t suede Yep. You uh you said swa before, but no, you're good. my bad. You're good. No, you're good. Dude, everybody's everybody says that because it is <laughs> it's pronounced both ways. It's yeah. suede or swa. Uh-huh. Um and so basically I've had this idea for years. Like I think it was like um it might have been before I got sober, honestly. Yeah. Um just to, I wanted to make clothes. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it had nothing, I didn't have the vision of like what the brand is gonna be about or whatever. Um, but like, yeah, probably two years ago, I started to really get serious about it. Um, and I was like, you know, what? I want to make some sort of clothing brand that has the message behind like what I'm, I'm living, you know? Right. Um, and so I actually like, that's probably when I started getting serious about it is when I got it uh, tattooed on my forearm right okay. here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I got some new ink, new ink, but yeah, this is right here. Tough. And, uh, yeah probably one of my my addictive personalities definitely transferred to tattoos like i got my sober date right here i dude i love that one it's great um, yeah i appreciate you bro so like <laughs> i definitely still have addictive uh, tendencies but <laughs> channeling them worst. elsewhere yeah it's not the worst thing in the world i don't want to be tattooed everywhere but like nope. you know i definitely enjoy them <laughs> but yeah so t swathe so 
um, the swathe is like a word that means to wrap around. So I always have this like concept of people, places, and things. What we surround ourselves in is like dictates what we're going to be like. Cause I, mm -hmm. I used to surround myself with, and no offense to those people, like people who were, you know, they're smoking, drinking, hanging out all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want that to be the way you live, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you do you. And, you know, I'm still friends with some of those people. I don't mm -hmm. see them very often, but like, I'm still, you know, it's not like they're not good people. Yep. That's the thing is like the people I were ha was hanging out with were good people, you know, just not doing the right thing. Like mm. fun to be around, um, you know, and I don't like, it's not like they had bad, it's like a super bad character. It wasn't like they were evil people, you know, right. they're just kind of not doing, it's just not being focused, not doing the things that are going to get, be, make you successful, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just started to realize everything we, we take in on a day-to-day -day basis, every, our, the places we're at, the, the people we're with, what we intake on social media, that yep. is going to dictate what we think, right? So I always, I always went to that concept of like swathe, you know, our surroundings wrapping around us, right? Yep. And so I was working with that, working with that, and I... Um, so I wanted to do streetwear originally. That was my, my, my plan. But then I was kind of like, I'm, I'm forcing this, you know, like I, I, I wear streetwear sometimes, but I'm not like super engaged with the culture, like, yeah. you know, like all over Supreme and Bape and, um, you know, there's a ton of like Fear of God, all these other different companies. I wasn't like super in tune with that. And I felt like I was forcing it. And so last year, I was the kind I pivoted and I was like, you know, uh, like what's up with athletic wear brand, like with athletic wear, like mm -hmm. how can I do this? And so I started to put a bunch of research into that. And um, I figured out how to work with overseas manufacturers. So I would get samples in from them. I would take their samples and I would like resize them the way that I, I thought they should, would be best for like yeah. the audience. Um, uh, di different like uh, blends of materials. Um, just based off of like clothing brands that I liked. So I would get like Nike stuff in. I like uh, men's Fabletics. Yeah. I love men's Fabletics, bro. I'm rocking a pair right love now. It. Um, who else? Uh, like Gymshark, looking at their stuff. I don't really mm -hmm. wear Gymshark, but just like, just getting input from all around. So um, yeah, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I have my, my text. You're good. Off. You're good. Um, so yeah, I get, was getting these samples, resizing them, sending them back. And then I got, you know, a bunch of clothes in and um, that's kind of where I, I began with the athletic wear and I had it at probably like right before school started. I brought it to school. I thought I was going to get it, start doing it there, but I was super busy, swamped the school. Um, it wasn't really ideal. We wasn't seeing a ton of people with COVID going on. Mm -hmm. I thought I had this vision of like selling it in person and whatnot. It wasn't working. And I wanted to be able to put out consistent content. Like I didn't want to do something for a little bit and then it goes off the face of the earth for you know a month or two yeah. I, like that's just like not what i want to do i want to be consistent with it so i waited till after school and that's why i launched it a week ago but um yeah so well, i can break down my logo yep you see, you see it right here i guess yes, sir so the t represents our thoughts right and the s represents our surroundings swathe so it's swathe around our, our thoughts mm -hmm. Our surroundings are wrapped around us and they affect our thoughts and our, what do our thoughts do? They lead to our actions. So mm -hmm. like if I'm going into a lift and I'm this is the mindset that a lot of people have is, man, I don't want to lift. This is going to suck. Well, blah, 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 like your lift, you're going to lift at whatever, 50%, 70%, 80%. But if you go in there and you tell yourself, it doesn't even have to be true. You could be like, I'm going to, I'm going to kick ass. Like I'm going to go in there. I'm going to, I'm going to kill these weights. I'm going to throw them up. Mm -hmm. and you're going to go in there and you're, you're going to, you know, you're going to have a great workout. And I think uh, every, like the, your base of everything you do is your thoughts. Like you, you can't escape them. They're always there with you. And so your mindset is based off of what you think. What are your beliefs? Yeah. Like belief, I think it's like thoughts, beliefs, actions, you know, like it's like your thoughts translate into like what you believe in, what you embody, like your mindset. And then mm -hmm. which in turn is like, what you what you put out on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. you know so that's what i was like i want to start from the base of it all with thoughts and kind of work from there um so yeah that's that's kind of where we're at right now so i'm, I'm working on 
I put out a bunch of different random content, but I kind of have like how I want the layout of all my posts. Like I want to do like um, kind of like psychological motivational stuff on the right hand side of columns, which will be predominantly like a black, um, a white box with black text. Nice. The box is going to be people wearing the clothes. They send me a quote in. So like, let's say you you have some clothes for me. Yeah. Be like, hey, Mike, could you take get some like pictures of you wearing the clothes? Um, and then send me those pictures and I'll do this edit over them and I'll kind of like make the screen mostly black with the quote that you chose. And then the next picture will show you wearing the, the clothes, like without the, the blackness over it. Um, so that would be one. And then the next column is going to be like motivation, like people, um, like that we look up to like celebrities, mm -hmm. um, greats that have come before us just talking about mindset, um, stuff like that. So that's kind of how I see these posts going. So I gotta, I, I gotta get going on that. I have some stuff ready to go. Um, but it's been, I always want to post like at least every other day. Yeah. Oh, so, um, it was been two days since I post. So I'm going to post tonight. I, uh, I did this giveaway. So I'm going to post the winners who won tonight. Let's go. I hope I won, dude. I commented. Right, dude. We'll see what we'll happens. See. We'll see. You <laughs> might you got a pretty good chance. So yeah, four people. Okay. The, the hoodie and the hat, they're, they're both fire. So I got the hat on right now. Yes, sir. Um, and then the hoodie, it's like a nice three quarter zip. Um, yeah, great for working out and great, great material, like nice and fitted too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of like the, the formatting of what I'm trying to do, but yeah. And then it's like, all right, that stuff's cool. But like, how do I take it to the next step? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I released it. I got a bunch of sales in the beginning. That stuff starts to die out. It's right. Like, how do I keep that consistent? You know, it's hard, dude. Yes. Very hard. And it's like, but, and then also how do I, um, kind of live by like what I'm saying too, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I'm, that's like the fork in the road I'm at. I wouldn't say fork in the road. That's kind of just like, you know, where I'm at in this journey. And it's now it's like, all right, where do I go from here? And like, I kind of want to like work with people who have addictions as well. Like maybe yep. do like rehab centers and that wasn't something I personally did, but, um, you know, it's like, however you need to like get it done, you know, for mm -hmm. me, I didn't have to do that. Like a, it was like my rehab. Um, but you know, I, I don't know if it's like go to these rehab places and tell my story and then be like, Hey, like, this is how I feel. My fire is like through fitness. Yeah. Um, and like try to maybe like bring them under my belt and like show them how to work out and like, or just like build like that team environment, um, something like that. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, and I want to start putting out YouTube content. So there's like all these things I want to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, there's only such little time that we have to like, <laughs> work at a nine to five, right? Yep. <laughs> I want to, I'm putting in extra work for my nine to five because I want to take in as much knowledge as I possibly can progress as fast as possible. Yep. Then there's the other things on the side that I want to do. So yep. You know, I quickly realized there's not enough time in the day for me to do what I want to do. Yes, and sir. Still, and still have a healthy enough lifestyle where I can like, you know, go out to dinner here and there, you know, go see friends a, a night or two a week, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not all the work. You can't always just work. Amen. So what I'm kind of trying to do now is like, just get people aboard who I think would be that kind of fit, like the stuff that I'm doing, like them have that same mindset um and it's like almost like i'm kind of thinking about giving equity of myself to other people like interesting um, so i want i'm trying to look for a videographer i gotta start putting it out there but it's it's not gonna be like i'm gonna be like hey i can't really pay you like i'll I, you know, i'll feed you if we're on the like we're doing stuff and whatnot but like really what you're gonna be doing is like you're gonna get equity of like my youtube channel you mm -hmm. know like you'll get 20 percent, 25 whatever the number is of you know eventually once it's monetized and making money that's something right. you, like if you're working in the clothing brand you do this you get a piece because what i started realizing like um a quote i like to use is you know a uh, hundred percent of a million dollars is nothing compared to ten percent of a billion dollars you know yeah. it's, it's don't try to spread yourself so thin it's like let delegate stuff to other people get them involved, give them equity. Mm -hmm. Because when people have equity in something, they have skin in the game, mm -hmm. they're motivated to work on that because, you know, they're, they see this, this thing that you're building. And when it's growing and growing, it's, you know, it's affecting them. Like it's their baby as well. You right. Know? Right. Like, that's what you got to do. I don't like, I could pay people. Like, it's not like I'm not like, I, you know, I have a pretty good salary. 
yeah i could pay people but it's like um for me i just feel like that's um it's not going to really get somebody super motivated and plus it's like it'll it will drain your pockets too if you're mm -hmm. it depends on like the quality of stuff you're trying to get and whatnot so I, for me it's more like get people involved with similar mindsets and like hey let's work on this thing together you know that's it that's, that's it what, yeah bro i just want to say i'm wishing you best of luck there i know it's a it's a grind right like i'm experiencing it on a small level with something i'm not even trying to monetize at the moment right mm -hmm. but just like staying consistent with this podcast it's hard i know but i just want to give you that encouragement keep it up bro because it's too, worth man. it it is 100 percent. absolutely bro and bro like this last question i have for you is like if you had to give a listener right one piece of advice um as they're trying to overcome addiction substance abuse whatever it is like what would you say to them in this moment hmm so I'll, I'll say two things to that the first thing I would say, the first thing I would say is, um, I want to say, one, if you if you know you have a problem, you know, don't be afraid to like reach out to somebody, go look for help because you know help is not going to come to you. You know, mm -hmm. like it's like if you don't put yourself out there, you're not going to be able to get the help that you need. So I think the big thing for me was that was my big step in sobriety was just putting myself in a vulnerable position saying, Hey, I have a problem, you know, right. like that is, that's the first step in AA is just admitting you have a problem. You know, once you do that, you know, you can kind of conquer everything. And that's like, I think that it's, that's so important because it's like you realizing that you have faults, right? Like there's so many people that are out there that just believe that, like, think, look at politics, like, this way that I look at things is right. Like, Correct. No, like, no, the way that I look at things is right. And like, just being able to say to yourself, like, hey, I'm not perfect. Like I have problems. Like, mm. you know, I'll, most of the time when I do things, I do them wrong, you know, whatever that is. And just be vulnerable, look for help. I think that is the most important thing, right? Mm. So like, whether that's reaching out to me after somebody watches this or looks at like one of my, my clothing brand, yep. something I post, um, you know, reaching out to somebody you know who has your best interest and maybe some of that you've been pushing off because they have your best interest in mind and because they do they may seem like they're clashing with you just because they want to start a problem but no it's really they want the best thing for you yeah you know? so it's kind of just being able to bring yourself down and say hey you know i was wrong like taking responsibility i was wrong um you know i do have this problem I think that is huge. And that's something I've really incorporated into my life is because I, you know, and I still can be stubborn, but I remember I used to always think everything I did was the right way. And now I'd like to just like, I like to listen to other people, get their perspectives on things um, and just be open because try I, to be less wrong. Right. Yes, be less I wrong. love that. I love yes, that. Yes. yes. And uh, I think my, the advice that I always tell kids when I see them. Yeah. Um, because like because i'll be out i'll play pick up basketball and whatnot and like kids will know who i am and like i like to just like talk to them for a little bit afterwards and right. i'm not giving the whole speech but i just say hey like all this stuff like that you're having fun doing like going out um whatever whether there's just playing video games all day like that stuff it's it's satisfying in the moment it's nice but like that moment's gonna flee and like you're mm -hmm. still gonna be left in the same spot you are so like the one thing of advice i would say is just the one thing i would say is that like you'll never regret working hard, you know, mm. you'll never regret working hard. And because I know I have a lot of regrets and they're not regrets that I can, can't live with. I'm not, I can't, I don't, you know, sleep right before I go to bed, sleep every night. I'm not thinking about like every night. I'm not like, Oh man, like if I trained really hard and did all this, I could be in the NFL. Like that is like one of something I do think about is like, man, I, I did all the wrong things and was still really good at what I did. Yeah. Like what if I, went down the right path and knew what I knew now, you know, right. But you can't, you really can't play that game with yourself, but like, just looking back from my own experiences, it's like, I don't remember going out to these parties and, you know, that's it, bro. And then smoke, like smoking every day. I don't remember what I was doing. I can, I barely, I barely have memory in all those years of, of smoking. Like, I swear, I can't remember like these certain moments anyway, but it's like the things that are going to matter most are, you know, the things that you're working towards. And it's like, you can choose to put a little time into them or you can choose to put a ton and you'll never regret to choose choosing to put a ton of time into those things.
Absolutely. Yeah, Being well, intentional, bro, about what you put your time in, right? Like whether it's like you said, your job, uh, you know, your side business, like even your friends, your social life, right? We talked about how that's important, like putting effort into that and doing what you want to do is important, but being intentional and not just letting it slide and letting your time go down places that, you know, you wouldn't otherwise want it to go, right? Yes. And you meet it, you'll meet tons of people on the way that are just like, man, 30 Drifting. years ago, I, I should have, I should have been doing this and, or, you know, and like, and, and there's nothing wrong. Like, like I say, like there's some people that would just love to like live on like a, a three bedroom house on a farm and like just raise their family. And like, that's great. Like mm -hmm. those goals are perfectly fine. But like, you know, if you're trying to grow and do something big, you're going to have to put that work in. And even if, even in that situation that I just said, I don't want to like put that down Yeah. You know? because if you're not working hard and you don't have those in values instilled in yourself, then you're going to set your kids up, you know, up for failure. They're not going to be instilled with those values. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I kind of realized is like, I want to be the best person I can be. So like one day when I have a family, yes. you know, those, those values are instilled into them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like we, like we were talking about before, everything that I do has repercussions for other people. Yes. And like by making myself the best I can be, it's going to affect other people positively. Mm -hmm. you know? So like, you're not, you're, you gotta like you take responsibility for yourself, but then realize like your responsibilities extend beyond yourself. Yes, yes, bro. Wow, amazing, dude. This I love it. I'm so thankful. I'm that you, time, man. Dude, yeah, this I'm is fine. great. This is great. I just love absorbing your wisdom and your knowledge. And again, I'm fired up on this Sunday. I feel like I'm about to go run a, a marathon or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I need I need to keep feeding myself with Luke Tim energy for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm come on. I'm always, I've always seen your posts and I'm like, oh man, I love what he's putting out there. I'm on the same page as you, my man. And that's, yep. and that's what I try to surround myself with too. You know, like my friends are like that as well. Mm -hmm. and it's like once you, you're feeding off of people who have the same mindset as you, powerful. You that's know, it. look for people like that. Look yep. for people who are looking to grow and put in extra work and do these extra things. Because if you're with people who are complacent, like, oh man, let's go watch this movie whatever, let's do this, let's do this. It's going to be hard to say no to those people. Those are your friends. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, you want to like, you want to hang out, you want to be with your friends. But if you're with your friends and they're always working hard, you're going to want to work hard too. Yep, yep. Drive yourself with greatness and you'll be great. That's it, bro. Yeah. Like drop. Listeners, if you made it this far, you're a real one. Thank you, brother yeah. Luke, Tim, Dude, for taking your time, you, dog. No, I thank appreciate you, it. My man. No, seriously. I, I love coming on and like, I love, I love talking about my story. I love sharing. And it, dude, it's been a while since we caught up. So I'm, yes, I'm really glad, you know, like, I, I love that we did the podcast, but, uh, you know, it was great getting in touch with you and like, let's keep in touch because, you know, I love your energy, bro. It's, it's contagious. You're exactly the type of person I'm talking about. You know, anybody that's listening to this right now, friends with the <laughs> stay close to that, man. Stay oh man, Seriously. You're too kind, brother. For the listeners, we're going to jot Luke Tim, his uh, T. Swaith website instagram yep, everything we're gonna drop it in the in the links everywhere i got y'all check you, it man. out everybody thank you so much peace Thanks. peace